Hi, and welcome inside another edition of Slew in 6. My name is Brian Henschen. Recently, I had the chance to sit down with legendary soccer commentator Bill McDermott. McDermott has been a part of the St. Louis University community for over 40 years. In 1972, he became the public address announcer for the men's soccer team. In addition, he's commentated on some historic soccer games, including 11 FIFA World Cups. McDermott is the longest serving soccer commentator in America, so it's no wonder that NBC's Bob Costas dubbed him Mr. Soccer. Let's get to the interview and hear about McDermott's career and why he is known as America's soccer commentator. Well, Bill, thank you for taking time to join us today. My pleasure. Um, you've been with the St. Louis University community now for about 40 years. What's, what's the significance of this university to you in your life? Well, to me and my family as well, uh, this is a second home for me. I went to college here, uh, played intercollegiate soccer here, always wanted to do that. All my idols played here, ended up working here for a while in the early 70s, and I came back and I'm still very actively involved in the overall university, in particular, the athletic department. Let's start with your playing career. What brought you to school? You mentioned your idols. Were mm -hmm. you recruited here out of high school? I was indeed recruited here out of high school. Had some other nice offers, uh, but wanted to stay in town. Kind of a homebody to begin with, but mm -hmm. I really wanted to stay in town uh, because of the pedigree of St. Louis University soccer, and I wanted to see if I could con indeed contribute to that. After you graduated from school, you went on and you became the public address announcer. How did you, uh, you land that gig? Uh, well, pure and simple. There was nobody else around to do it, and they <laughs> asked me to do it. I was going to be going to the games anyway, mm -hmm. so I figured, why not? Let's get behind a microphone, uh, talk about the sport that you love, and uh, a goodly number of the players that you still know and have seen them play before coming to St. Louis University. So what would you be doing if you weren't the public address announcer immediately out of school? I'd be going to the games anyway and probably yeah. coaching elsewhere, uh, but in particular and for sure, uh, continuing to go to St. Louis University soccer games. Um, you've gotten to cover 11 FIFA World Cups over the course of your career. What's it like covering an event of that magnitude on such like a national scale here? Well, uh, it's very simple. There is nothing like it. This mm -hmm. is the biggest sport in the world. Approximately 2 billion people may watch a World Cup final. 2 billion people. Uh, and it gives you an idea of what it is like to see a nation play against the nation. It's way beyond a city against a city. And this is a way a lot of small countries validate their nationalism in a World Cup. One word answer, Olympics or World Cup? World Cup without any question. Why? Uh, because it's a bigger event, mm -hmm. I think, because it singles around one particular sport. And everybody in the world who plays this sport, all 250, 300 nations, everybody's invited to participate. What's your plans here for after you finish, um, for uh, later this year, I guess? Do you want to... Are you going to be over in Brazil calling the World Cup? I am not again? going to be in Brazil. Uh, I'm going to be local this year. I'm doing mm -hmm. stuff for Camwax Radio. Uh, we'll have a daily show. Daily updates will be on Sports Open Line. And sometime between the June 12th opener and the July 13th close, we'll do five or six one-hour shows. So I look forward to it. Any timetable yet? Or do you know when your show is going to be airing? Not quite sure yet. We're still working that out. But there will be daily updates. And along with those uh, longer shows, we'll specialize in particular about the United States team. Who's the best player that you've ever seen come out of St. Louis U? Uh, Al Trost, I play with Al Trost, 67, 68, 69, uh, closely followed by Brian McBride and Pat McBride. Locally, when you look at the pedigree, the history that soccer has in the St. Louis area, why don't we have an MLS team and why have some of these lower level teams folded? What is it about St. Louis that can't sustain those teams? Uh, St. Louis's problem is from the top down, and by that I mean nobody around monetarily to be able to step up and take that huge plunge. You have to really for all intents and purposes being a billionaire's club to do it now and no one no one has the wherewithal at least has said that they want to get involved in that aspect of sports soccer the mls nationally where's that league at where's the game of soccer at in america i think it's tremendously strong and not just at world cup time uh, the league itself averages over 18,000 people per game heretofore that's unheard of now seattle leads that with over 44,000. that may be an aberration but it's a fabulous atmosphere and it gives people a real idea of what an international concept can be in the United States. Yeah, and I mean, do you look just across the state too at Kansas City? I hear that they have a beautiful stadium there and a great environment for games it as well. It starts with their stadium. Of course, you can do a lot with $200 million, which is what they spent on their venue. Uh, but in the process, because they do so well at their venue, they get World Cup qualifiers as well. And that's what you're looking for when you build your own stadium. 
who's uh, Brian McBride? You've had the chance to cover him. Uh, what was he like as a player? He's going into the Hall of Fame now, so obviously he was very good. But what was the experience like of getting to color, cover and watch him play? He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, justifiably so. There should have been an investigation if that didn't happen. Uh, he's one of the best forwards uh, that's ever played for his country. He played in three World Cups, scoring in two of them. And he is on the all-time United States men's national team first 11 and on St. Louis University's all-time first 11 without any question. All right, Bill. Well, that's all the time we have today. We uh, thank you for sitting down with My us pleasure. taking the time. It was a real pleasure, sir. My pleasure. We'd like to thank Bill for taking the time to talk with us. To learn more about Bill's soccer commentating career and other projects, visit McDermott-Design.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on SLU in 6.